Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I upgraded my Optiplex 980 um, as well as finishing the upgrade by installing the CPU. So um, I will show you here, I've already taken it apart, but it was a normal Dell Optiplex 980. Um, I bought it used on eBay for 95 bucks or 85 maybe, no 80, 80 bucks. So, um, yeah, I'll show you what I did. So basically, you op open the machine from here. There's a side panel. You just click this button here and you open up the side panel. Um, and the panel will come off in whole. Um, and then when you get in the machine, uh, you will see this main thing, which is the hard drive container. So you just click the, the blue buttons on the side and take this off. Be careful though, it will be attached. Um, and then inside mine, it came with a um, 500 gigabyte um, hard disk drive. So one of the things I'll be upgrading on this is putting a solid state drive in to which I can run my operating system on, which will greatly increase the startup speed. Um, so to do that, I basically installed the Windows um, ISO file onto a uh, flash drive. So all you need is an 8 gigabyte flash drive. This is a 32 gig, but it, uh, it works. So um, it's a free file on the Windows website. You want to install the ISO file onto the flash drive. Um, they'll give you a, sorry, this is 16 gig. They will give you um, an easy way to do that. Um, but if you don't have a Windows key, um, you won't be able to verify it on your on your device so uh, there is a website called fruity loops if you are sorry uh, magic bean um, and if you do are, are running windows 10 currently on a machine and you want to get your key you can download the the magic jelly bean uh, application and it will show you your your key so i will show you some of the upgrades that i've made already um, and then we'll get into installing the new CPU, which I got used on eBay as well. Um, it's an I -core, or Intel Core i7-870, which is a quad-core processor. Um, within this machine, as I bought it, um, I will, let me just, so you, you, first thing you wanna do is unplug your um, CPU fan here. There's gonna be four screws that I already took out on this fan. Um, it should just pull out like this. And then this is gonna be your heat sink here. So um, there are four screws, uh, spring screws as well on this. I've screwed them back in because I was opening this earlier. So let me take these off. I think I only put two of them back. So let me just quickly do this. So underneath the um, heat sink is going to be thermal paste, which is connected to the um, CPU. So I just put new thermal paste on a few days ago because I made some of these other upgrades we'll talk about in a sec. Um, and I just wanted to, to install the operating system. Um, so I put thermal paste on here a couple days ago, so it might be a little sticky on here, but let's see. Yeah, see, I feel it. I feel it on there. So, all right. So there you can see the thermal paste. That it takes a while for thermal paste to dry. Um, so if you're pulling this off for the first time, um, it should be dry and you should be easily able to scrape it off. But I'll just have to wash it off with a um, paper towel or something. But thermal paste is something you do not want to get on your skin. So anyway, there is the CPU. So that is the um, dual core i3, which is a much worse processor. So let me just go ahead. So what you want to do is release this release right here, pull it back. And then open this up and you will see the processor is just sitting right in there. But before I get to that, I want to show you some of the other uh, upgrades that I made. So um, I went ahead and bought on Amazon a pretty cheap graphics card. So I want to be able to, you know, casually play games. Uh, this is the one I bought. It's a GT1030. Uh, NVIDIA makes the chip. Gigabyte makes the um, full GPU. But um, the, the real reason that I, I had to you know, skimp out on the GPU is because 
Um, this is a SFF or a, a slim form factor um, 980, so it's a very, very small machine. Um, and we'll get to talking about the power supply, which is another issue that I had uh, not being able to upgrade the power supply due to the size of this very, very small power supply. So this card is, when you put the heat sink in here, um, this is pretty much the only card that I could get that would fit in here without sort of having to do, you know, hardcore alterations on the heat sink and getting out, you know, heavy machinery. So this card is actually powerful enough to, to work pretty well, but, um, you know, that's probably going to be the biggest upgrade you're going to make along with the uh, CPU. But to go with that, um, the other thing I did was I replaced this processor or this uh, hard drive that came with it with a 250 gigabyte solid state drive. So I was able to just buy a mount at Fry's. Um, it was like five bucks. It screws, it just sits in there and then you screw the solid state drive into the mount. Um, there's screws on the side of the solid state drive, which you can see there. There's four of them. And then you want to plug the uh, SATA drive cable and the power cable from the power supply into the hard drive. And yeah, so um, I installed Windows onto the solid state drive. Um, to do that, basically you open up the, the BIOS of the computer, which is the, through the motherboard. You hit F2 when you're starting the computer and you change the uh, boot sequence to just put um, USB as priority and then you want to put the SATA drive actually as second priority because after you install from the USB drive you want it to go to your solid state SATA drive so um, you can look that up if you want to know how to do that it's not too hard to change the order I didn't even have a mouse at the time so I was just using a keyboard to do it so um, the GPU, the solid state drive to boot the, to run the operating system, and I am planning on getting either an external hard drive or a external um, hard disk drive bay, so I can you know store all my files and stuff on either hard disk drives or other solid state drives. And then as long as the operating system is running from a solid state drive, you will get much much faster um, boot up times, and it's just all around for a better computer. So. The next thing I did was I installed 16 gigabytes of RAM in here. So this is a little, I had to be kind of specific on what RAM to buy. Um, there's some issues with this model um, in, because it's dual channel, you have to make sure you get DDR3 dual channel RAM and you have to install it correctly. So to install dual channel correctly, um, it comes, it'll come in a box like this. I have my old RAM in there, but um, see dual channel. Uh, 8 gig 2 by 4 sticks so um, I got two of those as you see over here the other ones over here but what you have to do to install it correctly is you see the the black thing here and then the black thing there so to install it correctly from the same box you want to put in uh, the one stick here and then the other stick here so you're going to skip a slot um, and installing the RAM from the same box so this is one and three, and then two and four is the other box. So that way allows me to get my 16 gigs of RAM. So I got my RAM upgrade, my GPU upgrade, my solid state drive upgrade, and so now I have to replace the CPU, which I will do now, it's pretty easy. So it should just um, easily come out. It might be a little sticky here because of the thermal paste. I'll just pull it right out and so we'll see that the way it is orientated is with the writing on the bottom facing the left side of where I'm sitting the other way to look is also at the bottom to make sure it lines up correctly and we will now let's see I gotta put this hold this down we will open up our new CPU, which hopefully works because it is used, but you know, save a lot of money and get used stuff. But should be should be decent here. So looks like it's upside down already. All right, looks pretty good. Yep, looks good. So this is it. So you can see this is a Intel i7 
870. So this is a quad core chip. This is going to be much more powerful in the brains of the computer. It's a 2.93 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and install this. And it just, like I said, make sure you do it the correct way here. And just go ahead and pop that right in, just like that. Go ahead and close this. You want to pull back, get it under the screw, and then put her back in. Just so, just like that. And I will grab a paper towel and be right back. All right, so we're gonna grab our heat sink here, and we're gonna clean this off, clean the thermal paste off. Even though because I put this on so recently, it probably wouldn't be bad to reuse it, but just to be safe here, we're gonna clean this off pretty well. Like that, we'll worry about the old ship later. And this is the way I like to do thermal paste. A lot of people put it on the actual chip, but I just put it on the heat sink and I spread it thinly. You do not want to put too much on or it will leak out the sides and it's just not necessary to have. You want to have a thin layer. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just put about that much on is all you need. I will use the same thing that I used. See, this has been sitting out, this little thing with a little bit of thermal paste, and it's still not dry. So you can imagine under, you know, not being exposed to air, how long it takes to dry. But you can pretty much see the outline of the previous um, card where it sat flush with the heat sink. So you just sort of kind of follow that, and uh, I like to get it all the way to the sides here so and thermal paste is very very important if you do not um, use thermal paste you're at a very high risk of your CPU overheating and just possibly dying so definitely spend the four or five six bucks to get um, some decent thermal paste so just like that it's good enough and now we just go over where the lineup should be try to just sit it on so it will you you'll feel it on the CPU mm -hmm. and we will push down one of the screws here I should really be using two hands to do this all right once you get the first one in should be good there and then we will do this this one will be the one that... Alright, right there. So... Come on. There we go. Alright, so once you get the two corners in, it should be okay. Do the other ones. That one went right in. Not too tight, but you want it secure. And finally, the last one. Alrighty, so now we got the heatsink in place. So I want to install the CPU fan and plug her back in. This goes right here, right in place. You want to take the cord and plug her in. So I will re-screw these back in. So I gotta open this bag here. Let's see here. Where's this? <clears throat> Come on. screws in here. It's the silver ones I need. Oh Jesus, whatever. Alright, there we go. 
So I need these four silver screws. And they are going to go in these four slots right here. So put it up. Let me see if I can get my two hands here. All right, not gonna be the best view, but I'm just screwing in screws. All right, just like that. Got thermal paste all over it, that's alright. Next one. Let's see if I can just adjust this here. Come on. Alright, we can do that. There we go. Alright. Now I got two hands. Probably should have done one on the other side first, but that's all right. I'm gonna stand up to see. There we go. And the last screw. I will tell you, having a magnetic screwdriver is extremely helpful. This one's a little harder to get in, but all right. All righty. So now we are pretty good. Just have to adjust my camera and then, so we're gonna have to put the optical drive. Oh, it's upside down. Don't wanna do that Not like this. All right. Put the um, optical drive back in. All right, and then we're gonna have to get, let me just put the rest of this back together and I will be right back with you. All right, so I got everything up and running. I left the uh, side cover off just to make sure nothing was overheating and I wanted to make sure my uh, graphics card was, fan was spinning because it's so close. I think I might end up um, taking this off and maybe cutting a small hole in it because it's so close that it's like dangerous in my opinion. But we got fan spin here, which is good. It's running nice and cool. Um, and I put the monitor up and the keyboard and mouse and you will see here that once I open up Nova Bench here actually you know what let's switch to uh, I'll switch to uh, real real screen recording Hold on. hey guys so um, back here with my uh, on my screen here so going to show you uh, pretty much my benchmarks of my build. Um, you can see here I got the i7 processor in here. It's running at 3.19 gigahertz which is actually a little bit overclocked but that's okay. Um, Nvidia GeForce 1030 and then my 16 gigs of RAM. So um, I'm also running off a solid state drive so check my temperatures here. Everything looks good. GPU, you know it's a little close to that thing so it's running a little hot but that's manageable. CPU looks good. And I'm just going to run a quick Nova Bench uh, score here. I just got 1241 uh, about 30 minutes ago. Um, and then yesterday I ran it with the i3 processor, which is, you know, about half as good as the one I have in here. So you can see I got a 920 yesterday. So it takes a few minutes to run this. Um, it will do a graphics test as well. So let's just sit and wait.
this is the quick, quickest benchmark program out there um, for running quick benchmarks on your builds and your PCs. Uh, it's free to download. See now it's doing the graphics test, so. Getting about 20 frames per second, which uh, on this test is actually pretty decent. And there we go. So we got a 1229, so a little bit less than what we got earlier. Um, so as you can see, my RAM is real solid. CPU is decent. Uh, GPU is okay. Could definitely. This is definitely the weakest part of the. Um, build but then my obviously my disk is my solid state drive so that's reading and writing pretty fast um but yeah so that's my my build here just show you real quick here that i do have my ram and my processor here so it is running all 16 gigs of ram uh it's running the processor fine 2.93 that's the correct gigahertz speed there um, so yeah people who are having issues uh, putting four sticks of RAM in here just make sure you have the right dual channel uh, DDR3 RAM and you should be be good to go so that's my build that's my uh, sort of budget PC build from uh, Optiplex 980 pretty much upgrading everything uh, except the power supply so yeah so this all this is running on under 235 watts so it's a I think the GPU is only a 30 watt GPU which is a very very small power load for a GPU so might be upgrading that in the future but again the issue um, is space so yeah that'll end the video uh, thanks for thanks for watching uh, go ahead and smash that like button bye bye